Today's video is on CMake parse arguments. Let's get started. I just gotta create a branch and get on with it. Today's video is gonna be pretty quick because I found this little nugget feature in thinking about a separate video on CMake super builds that made me say, hey, I think this would be a good topic to highlight on its own. Now, why use little features like CMake parse arguments? It's this, the theme is the same with all these videos, which is you're gonna come across complexity either in your own CMake or in CMake that you find out in the wild. And so if you have uh, these little tools at your disposal, uh, it can help pare down that complexity and keep things under control. So without further ado, let's head over and look at code. So as always, we are starting with some documentation. And one thing I just wanted to point out, if you haven't seen it yet, is that the latest CMake documentation, the Kitware has started to add the version number when particular features were added to CMake, which is super useful if you have a particular minimum requirement to know what features you can use or not. And this used to be something you would have to bisect in this list, like, oh, find a version that, oh, look, it doesn't exist. Then you have to go back to the latest documentation, whatever. Uh, the point being, it's awesome. Kudos Kitware and any other contributors working on this in the documentation. Good job. So what CMake parse arguments does is gives us a standard way to express, here are all the arguments I would expect to have passed to a particular macro or function. Uh, you can have a, uh, a collection of variables that come out of CMake parse arguments that get defined uh, based on the arguments that got parsed. And let's look at a quick example in the documentation, and then we'll talk through the way I've used it in some of my super builds. We look at this my install command as an example. There are different options here that uh, are passed as arguments, and some of which expect more than one value after it. Some might expect one, some might expect nothing. And those three things are what parse arguments looks for. So you can say, uh, CMake parse arguments, which if we go back to what the signature is, there's a prefix that you say all of the output variables uh, that are going to read all of these things are going to be prefixed with a particular prefix. We'll see that in a sec. And then there's single like options, like a flag, like you, you specify this and it just is like on off. And then there's keywords that you specify this and then there's a single value after it. And then there's multi-value. And then finally you pass all the things that you want CMake to parse. Uh, and so they're like this my install, then uh, you pass all the single value options. So these would be uh, set as Booleans if they're present or not. Then the one value arguments, uh, which ends up being these, and then multi-value arguments. So then if you take this, what do you get out? So if we look at the, the options uh, on this command, um, optional was passed. So the prefix underbar, then the name of the what you're parsing, if it's an option, so passed as this first collection of options, uh, this one was true because it was set. Um, fast, even though that was a valid value, was false because it was not present. And then like for the, the, the one value arguments, um, let's see, we have destination, so that would take bin. So yep, Look, my install destination has been, etc. You can read the rest of it here. So let's head over and see a, a real world example that I ended up using this for. So what I have here is a super build that just builds Osprey. Now Osprey is a project that has several dependencies. And so what I don't use this for development. This is just a little CMake list that when I invoke CMake on it and build, it'll actually go and fetch everything Osprey needs except for a C++ compiler, uh, it'll it'll fetch everything, all of the dependencies, and build it all and put it in a nice install location. Now, that's going to be an episode in and of itself, but there is no command called build subproject. And so, like, this actually is magic that I have this project, and it's called rkcommon, and it, it the source to, to build rkcommon lives here, and, you know, there's... I built I built this function, it's really a macro, I built this macro to make a larger problem look smaller. And so let's let's look at its definition. Um, here it is, macro, build sub project. Now, uh, external project add is very powerful. It's also very large. You can see there's lots of options that go with it. And um, there's, there's basically two reasons that 
in this super build, I decided to make this little macro. First is uh, there's there'd be a lot of duplication. And so there are some CMake variables when I build every every project here. I want them to all be identical. I want them to physically always be the same. And then there's particular with external project, you lay out like, where does the source get downloaded to? Where is it extracted? Where's the build directory? Where does it get installed to? And uh, I wanted those to be well-defined based on the name of the project. And so one way to do that is to have um, this translation where I provide some information and then I construct the final invocation of external project add in a very repeatable way uh, by not copying and pasting and tweaking and accidentally having inconsistencies. So that's one. Second is this is actually easier to reason about. So instead of seeing a sea of lots of invocations of external project add with this much smaller interface, uh, it's easier to reason about um, like the name of a project, where it's fetched, specific CMake variables for that project, and then which other uh, projects it depends on. Like that's it. This is a simpler interface, so it's easier to reason about. There's a lot of reasons to use functions and macros. That was the, the one I had here. The thing here is this macro, remember if you go back and watch the video on functions and macros a few weeks back, there's there's a variable called argn that, has, that represents all of the list of arguments passed to this macro. So all of these things together is an argn. And we can use cmake parse arguments to deconstruct all of this stuff we passed here to deconstruct it into some variables to then pass on to external project add. So uh, hopefully it's actually straightforward to see. Um, you know, I have name and URL. So name, what's the project name and what's the URL, like the of where on GitHub to go fetch the source. Um, and then I have some multi-value arguments for like, you can depend on more than one previous project and uh, the build args like that we want to add um, on top of the standard CMake args that invoke the underlying CMake on that project. Those are multi-value. And so here I have a prefix, build subproject, and I don't have any options uh, like those those true false flags. Uh, just got some one value args, some multi-value args, and then obviously all the arguments to pass. So the details of this are outside of the scope of this video, but what comes out is pretty straightforward. I build subproject, I got my name. Uh, build subproject. Uh, we got the URL. We've got the extra build args. We got what that project depends on. And so when you're building, like this, this actually fetches a bunch of projects and builds them all and does quite a lot of stuff. But when you have stuff like CMake parse arguments, uh, you can build little functions, little macros that make this not make this less complicated, make your life a little bit easier. Uh, and so that's what I wanted to show you is that this little tiny nugget is actually really, really useful. And if you ever find yourself like trying to parse arguments yourself, like to do what this does, but you are dividing out these option names and the lists and stuff behind it, just don't do it. It's just too complicated. Uh, I mean, sure you can, obviously somebody implemented it here, but this is robust, tested, easy, just use it. It's it's so nice. And that's it for today, folks. That's CMake Parse Arguments for you. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like and subscribe. And down in the comments below, let me know what you want to hear about. I'd love to make sure this content's good for you. And as always, until next time, happy coding, everyone.